Hi guys, I'm Ishan from FTC Team 9794 Wizards.exe and today we're going to be jumping into the third part of our odometry spellbook where we, we're going to be covering the wiring for the odometry chassis that we built in our previous videos. So we're going to talk a little bit about the motors, how they plug in, how the encoders plug in, and stuff like that on this chassis. So you may notice that there are some changes to this chassis since you last saw it in the uh, Odometry Spellbook Part 2. And that's because we use this uh, chassis for our robot in one day challenge. So you can see that we've added some manipulators, some servos and stuff like that. Um, but the basics frame is the same. Um, and so let's get into how exactly we wired this and how you can make the wiring on this really easy and really neat because there's some really cool features built into this chassis that allow you to wire it super simply. So now let's take a look at how this entire chassis is wired. So we're looking at the underside of the chassis and you can see that a lot of the wires are hidden right here in this channel. And what the nice thing about that is, is all of them stay hidden when you look at the chassis from the top and they're also protected from getting stuck into uh, moving parts like these gears or anything like that. So the nice thing is with this chassis, you can just take the motor's wires and put them through this hole on both sides and then they just come into this channel and you can use zip ties. I use a bunch of them just to hold the wires down in this channel to prevent uh, them from moving around and scraping on the floor. Then there's a hole in the center where I snake all the wires up and that goes to this rev hub, which is in this area right here. One of the things that Go Build It includes in the Shaper Kit is these plastic pieces that go on the inside of the channel. So they go on the holes of the channel and those are great for protecting your wires from getting uh, chewed up on the edges um, from various things like scraping your wire on the inside. So um, if you can, try to put those inside of each of the holes that you have a wire running through. I cannot do this because of how thick the wires were and how thick my connectors were, but uh, if you were to use the standard bullet connectors that come with the Go Build -A motors, that would be a great thing to do. So when it comes to wiring the, uh, the odometry encoders, uh, the wire goes straight in and I also use the side hole right here and just pass it straight through to the center and then I can use the same area that I use for the motor powers as the encoders that I have. And then for this encoder on top, I actually just went down and across and uh, down to the center place. That way all of my wires for my drive are right inside that channel. And Let's go ahead and take a look at what types of connectors we use and stuff like that um, and flip over the robot. So now that we have our drivetrain flipped around, let's look at the wiring on the top. See these wires here, these are all just servo wires. Since we were doing robot in one day, we didn't have much time to clean them up. But these are the main wires that we're gonna look at for the odometry chassis. And these are all the power wires and the encoder wires that come up from that center channel and go straight into the rev hub. And so one of the decisions that we made as a team was instead of using an adapter from the bullet connectors that come standard with the yellow jacket motors and adapting them to the JST connector that is on the rev hub, we decided that we were just gonna cut the bullet connectors off and crimp the JST connectors onto the end. And that's really gonna come down to the personal decision and how your team operates. Uh, our team has the resources to be able to crimp the wires and it ends up being cheaper for us, but some teams may not have the skills to do that, in which case I've linked uh, an adapter that you can use from the bullet connectors to the rev hub in the description below. Also, for the odometry encoders. You are, will need a rev level shifter, which is how you are going to be uh, converting the 3.3 volt signal that the rev hub reads to the 5 volt signal that the encoders produce. And so I've also linked those in the description below. And I've also linked uh, some wires that you will need in order to plug those in. So how it works is the encoder plugs into one wire and that wire plugs into the level shifter and the level shifter then plugs into the rev hub in these ports using the JST connector. And so um, the port that you plug it into doesn't really matter. We'll show you how to configure that in code. Uh, all that's important is that you just get it in there and all the uh, wires are lined up. Some other things that we've added to the chassis is we were able to actually put a power switch on here. Uh, this is the rev default power switch. And one of the nice things about it is the holes on the mounting bracket actually line up with GoBuilda. Um, so the 16 millimeter uh, hole pattern is actually the same one that rev uses. So you can just bolt that straight onto the GoBuilda channel. Um, and we again, just wired that down here and wired that underneath and that connector comes into here. 
And then for the battery holder, you can see our battery is right here, right in the center, which is approximately where we want it because it'll keep the center of mass near the center of the robot. Um, we use the Go Builder strap battery holder. Uh, this is sold online from Go Builder. You can use whatever you want. Uh, we just use this because we had it. Um, you can 3D print one if that works better for you. Uh, this thing works pretty well and it's able to hold the battery in pretty securely. We were not able to, it was not able to fall out and it's pretty secure in there. Um, some other things to note, we did have to add a USB hub because we were trying to use a camera and robot in one day. Um, and so we put that here. If we had more time, we would probably figure out another place to put it. And if you want to see more on how we configured the USB hub, uh, go watch our uh, OpenCV and FTC part five video, uh, which covers the configuration of using this USB camera and the USB hub with the uh, phone. So speaking about the phone, how would we mount a phone onto something like this? Well, we've made these 3D printed cases for the ZTE Speed and the Nexus 5 phone. We may do some more phones in the future. And one of the nice things about this case is it's got a 16 millimeter hole pattern on the edge. So again, we can just take some screws. So I'm, I just got some screws just to show you that it actually lines up. And you can just drop them in and screw them in. And they line up perfectly with the Go Build a channel. And so you can mount this phone pretty much anywhere. Uh, probably recommend somewhere closer to the inside of the robot and it just has to connect over the USB to the rev hub. So that pretty much covers up how all the wiring is done. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of decisions that you have to make whether you can crimp your own wires, whether you want to buy pre-crimped wires, what adapters you want to do. And I've linked a lot of the um, pre-made solutions in the description below. That way you can uh, get something like this up and running very quickly. We'd like to thank GoBuilda and US Digital for sponsoring this video and this video series. Without them, none of this would have been possible. We really wanted to get this stuff out to you guys. And without their help, we would not be able to create resources like this. So please go into the description below, check out some of the products they have and support them uh, so then they can continue supporting uh, videos and projects like ours. Uh, and we can continue making these resources available to FTC teams. Thank you guys for watching this video. We hope you learned something about how to wire this entire chassis and get it ready to program for odometry. In the next part of the video series, what we will be doing is actually starting the programming of the odometry chassis and using the odometers that we created uh, to move to certain point positions. Like always, please leave any comments if you have any questions. Send us an email at wizards.exe at gmail.com and like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.